Welcome to the worst nightmare of all. Reality. Explore the lesser-known stories of our unknown world. Join the pursuit of the paranormal with Ash and Greg. Hello again, Ash. How are you? Hello, I'm good. I'm good, fresh off Minicon. How are you, Greg? Yeah, I'm fresh off Minicon as well. That was so good. That was so good. We, we will talk about that separately, although we have talked about it before. <laughs> Which will be out soon, I think. Or if we put it out. It's already out. <laughs> it's out. It came out yesterday. Um, but yeah, just before we go anywhere, we've got Daryl on again with us, joining us yep. from Mozambique. So welcome yep. along, Daryl. Hello, guys. But before we start, the starting intro voice um, about the reality bit, that is Pinhead from the original Hellraiser film. And the new Hellraiser film has just come out with a female Pinhead. And I was trying to watch it today online. And I'm just trying to find it. And I hope it's as good as the reviews say. Just wanted to throw it out there. I'm a big Hellraiser fan. And that was the sample from the start. So just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. So, yes, welcome along, Daryl. Thanks for joining us again. Um, yeah, pleasure. So last time we spoke to you, you introduced us to, or a run-up to where you were sort of now, um, seen some orbs locally, and then you've got the drone out and have been capturing things that you've called elementals. So everybody who doesn't hasn't heard the first episode needs to go back through our archives and get that i'm not sure which number episode it is it's about a month or so ago so have a listen to that so you can get up to speed with where we are now but we wanted to talk to you again just for the fact that you've been so prolific on social media posting your videos which is testament to to you really because i know video editing can be a shit task at the best of times and it's it's one of them things um that you you've got to do and you've been putting out videos constantly on twitter i've been following it and i've been following your journey since we last spoke so can you give us an update as to what what you've been up to since you came on true um calm uh, uh calming down i think from the last interview was one of the changes <laughs> we didn't get really excited there was Did one it. of them you know also were nervous being the first podcast where it was just i'm going to tell you all my story <laughs> but yeah i think a lot a lot more calm uh, a lot more focus on other people's research yeah. as in as in the world and also that uh yeah, more confusing because of that, because you end up listening to things from the Quran, you know, all the way through to, yeah, so it's just a much broader, a broader plate to eat from, mm. which, which, which makes me more lost, to be honest with you. I think I'm more lost than I ever have been, in a sense. So yeah, so we, when we last spoke to you, we, you, we'd seen some videos of the elementals. And since then, I've seen that you've been able to sort of, you've seen the same shape a couple of times that I've seen on a recent video. More, so, you know. So what if you, yeah, talk, talk about it, it that. It comes back, us. to be honest with you, everything comes, for me, it comes back to time and energy spent editing. There's, mm. I'm showing two or three, but I've actually got a hundred. I don't have the time to sit and just edit out everything and everything and everything and everything. Um, it's quite a lot of data that, that, that I've been able to get over three years. Yeah. So it all comes back to time, but, but, but definitely through, through repetition, which makes great observational data, repetition, repetition, repetition. Yeah, if, if there was a team of people, they could certainly sit and pull out um, elements enough to make a family tree and give specific elements a genre a, a species a name what whichever which way we're going to go with it 
But there is enough data. There isn't enough time. Yeah. So do you think that the, with the, the elementals that you've seen and the stuff that you've been putting out, that there is actually, like you just mentioned, like a family tree, do you think that they are... Linked? Yeah. Uh, do you there's... think that there's a hierarchy of of like species as such? I don't want to go so far to species. This is where we're getting. I'm getting so confused. It's like, you know, is it a biological matter? Has it got its own separate brain? Or is it being controlled by something? Everything okay. seems to, to, to look like everything is controlled by something, whether it's a small black plasma within the white plasma or whether they all radio controlled per se from another craft. The small, the very, very small ones, all the plasma-ish, it's got to do with some sort of a beam or microwave or radio wave or gamma wave, any invisible sort of wave they're working on. But they are, they are the bigger craft hiding in the background. There has to be control. It's highly confusing. So you say about the bigger craft in the background. I've seen... Um some videos you put up about where there's maybe objects in clouds. Mm. Did you want to explain just a bit about that? Because that was interesting as well to see. You know, from, from what I, I mean, obviously everything is my opinion. No one is going to know everything. But um, from, from yeah. my observation so far, clouds is probably the number one um, location to look for them. They just seem to love clouds. But then when you hear that they love water as well, it kind of makes like a lot of sense because then they love the smoke. So, so clearly they don't love oxygen. They, they love the clouds with the water and the sea and the lakes. But when they want to come out into the land and the forests, they, they seem to enjoy the smoke. And that's got probably something to do with that they are, a, they are USOs. You know, they, they're meant to be underwater with no oxygen. I... I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a crazy world out there. Once you start looking in, like you mentioned. Um, yeah, well, all I can do is just observe where they're coming from, you know, and then yeah. base my, my theory on that. So we, we've actually, we've just finished a, a, like a season of shorts where we've been discussing the United States of America and the different states. And a lot we and we've also actually just done an episode about ranches in America, and all of the ranches and some of the the bits we've seen on the other bits of states all surround or are linked to water. We were we were pulling up maps, me and Ash, the other day when we were talking about ranches, like Skinwalker, Blind Frog Ranch, Evans Ranch. Yeah, he says he. Uh, Iseti Ranch, and they all had some kind of link to being near water. So you mentioning water is is interesting in itself, and like you say, the clouds clouds are moisture in the air. That that's that's what they are. Um, so why why do you think they use the clouds for the water or the the moisture? Do you think it's cl cloaking cloaking them a bit easier than just being in broad daylight? You know, we, we, when I think back at it now, it goes back to the first day I saw them. You know, as a photographer, when they passed a drone, I was that's weird. They're like made of, of what? They're made of like a plasma. And I don't even know what, what plasma means. It's the only word that I could find for that invisible cloaking. It's there. It's not there. I, you can't, t you can't hold any of these objects. So when, when everyone talks about why they can go so fast, surely there can't be an alien in it. If there's an alien in it, he's going to pulverize. How can it go under the water without not making any wake? How can it go hypersonic without creating any heat? Well, you've got to think logical about it. It is a projection of some sort. Somebody is projecting it from somewhere. It's not physical. It's metaphysical. So logic and reason that is their technology and then and then when you have a look at some of my evidence of there's the gray alien in the window well there he is and then you look back at the big craft in the trees well the gray alien sitting in the trees and this is the mechanisms that they are using 
everything everything seems to be trans medium in the invisible world which then oh that's where the quran comes in a little bit you know because it starts talking about the jinn and uh those in the fireless flame you know there's so much religion that speak about fire and reincarnation and and death and it's it's so so deep because logically it is an invisible world that humans can't see but the camera can so you've got to come back to one thing it's the invisible world and i don't see visitors creating that invisible world that is religious sort of a base that is a permanent thing that's always there you mentioned that you saw the matching objects and you got some pictures and videos on your twitter where you're sort of matching the images together and it's i mean it's pretty hard to dispute that some of these are the same objects for me as the two identical to just match completely so if they're the same object, and some of these are years apart, do they are they living here, or are they coming back to the same place from wherever they're coming from? Do you think? I I I, I think because now next year will be my fourth season. Each time I fly out to a fire, I'm like, "Are you guys there?" And they're still there. So logically, four years, uh, it feels like they've been here forever. Um. There's not one day that I, I'm actually worrying about them just completely disappearing and I can't prove myself to anybody. Let's just say NASA comes here to my camp and says, all right, Daryl, I've seen all your work now, now prove it. Um, I have no qualms with that. We would physically be able to locate them any day. Depending on the conditions, depending on if there's some good fires, depending on conditions, but generally, yeah, um, it seems like it's, it's a permanent thing. Um, and, and, and it's it's questionable. Sorry, I just why we have this in, in my mind. Yeah. So so let's have a look. Okay, so just because humans cannot see them, does that mean that is, there is a fourth dimension? That there is a multiverse? Or just because humans can't see them, um, does that mean that that they could have worked around only our eye spectrum. So here we, we're trying to manufacture another realm, another dimension. But just because we can't see it, it doesn't mean that there is actually another dimension. It could be because they are part of our creators and creations. They already have worked around our eye spectrum. So when we put a drone up or a camera up, it spots it. It has all the right spectrums that it needs to. Physically, they, they could be working around just human eye spectrum alone. And it might not mean that there is another multiverse. Ah, it's just it's just an opinion, to be honest. So that that is a good good theory because when we go say ghost hunting or doing paranormal investigations, we would use a full spectrum camera to capture stuff that we can't see. So like you say, the fact that we can't see it, does it, does it mean it's not there? No, not really. It's there. So are they there all the time and they just show themselves to us when we can actually see them with our eyes? Or do we have to use a different medium? So like, like you just mentioned, is there a different dimension or is it just the fact that they become into the, the frequency range that we can see. Because, I mean, we, we've talked about um, multi-dimension or interdimensional beings um, on other podcasts with other people, and that's, that's definitely a theory um, a lot of people are pushing towards. But, but what you just said there is, is a way I hadn't looked at it before, that... We, we just can't see them because they're out of that range. And it's interesting. I just wanted to ask you a question about the creators. You said about the creators. Who are the creators or who is the creator, do you think, in your opinion? My opinion, 
The closest person that makes me feel like it's the truth is Dolores Cannon's work on the garden, the keepers of the gardens. Something within this kind of realm is the one that rings the most truest to me. I don't know. I don't know a great deal about about that theory. So, what could you explain that a little bit further? It's not. Well, she's I she, she's she's really a, a phenomenon. I don't want to talk too much because my knowledge on her is not so great. But um, mainly mainly about there being some sort of a galactic federation in in a certain sense. And interesting. The interesting. Earth. We'll come back to that in a second. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the Earth, the Earth in its entirety is one grand massive experiment of growing life and life itself. The possibilities of, of, of anything and everything is limitless. But there is control. And the Keepers of the Gardens is kind of where uh, she takes it. I don't want to go too far because my knowledge is not so great on it. But, uh, that sounds quite, quite interesting, actually. I'll look into that. Um... But interesting, you talk about the Galactic Federation. Um, we've spoken, I spoke to somebody at the Minicon, actually, and she was talking about a Galactic Federation. We've had a guest on, Dr. Christopher Macklin, and he's talked to us about being on the Galactic Federation. He was one of the chairs on the Galactic Federation. So interesting you should talk about that and i'll definitely look into dolores because that's that's an avenue we've sort of been through with the podcast so do you so many questions <laughs> have, you, have you got anything cash before i just go down some kind of rabbit hole uh, yeah i just wanted to uh maybe for those that haven't listened to the first episode just uh remind because you use your drone and you capture footage of wildfires, bushfires in around Mozambique and that area of Africa. Um, that was how you sort of started first seeing these, what you call elementals. Uh, is that about right? Just so our sort of listeners who maybe haven't listened to the first episode sort of understand how you're seeing what, what we're talking about. Yeah, roughly. Um, I think, to to be honest with the work I'm doing now, it's exactly that um, one day in the smoke map, drone got bombarded by strange elements. I wanted to see if I could repeat it and I was able to non-stop and uh, a, a massive body of work transpired out of all of it and this is where we are now asking the questions. And there's lots of those questions. Oh there's lots and me too I question everything I do. It's just like what? What is this? What is this? So um, and again for people who haven't listen to the first part you just uh, uh, around the time of covid when that hit you had this you'd bought this l lodge would it, would it, like a cabin lodge type thing with yeah like an e and an, e an eco an eco camp uh, concentrating yeah. on birding actually is birding is the the camp and th and then covid hit and we got this is where you your drones and, and all the and that's where we got to basically so we talked about the fact that you'd had some experiences like where you live uh, have you had any more since since we last spoke um it's interesting to see if they've they, if they're kind of trying to communicate with you in some way because you mentioned a little bit earlier that you asked you asked the question are you still here and they're always there i just wonder if they've they've tried to reciprocate communication with you i would say i would say no okay. I, I i really would i really would say no i want to be pretty true on on the journey you know after the face burn yeah um i wasn't really concentrating to capture more on the camp i didn't concentrate at all on it um but after that, after the big stuff happened last year, things are not the same with regards to them. But in a different sense, um, okay, you know, it is it it is really, really, really so so difficult because I know they are tapped in, as in even this podcast. I I, I know it, and I, I know it with almost a certainty. 
not because they've told me this. It's just because I know how magic they are, and it is just a a Wi-Fi. They've got the they've got Wi-Fi covered. But so you th- so you think that they're, they're actually taking notice, ne- not necessarily listening, but they're they're taking notice of this. I don't. Do, I'm not a crystal person. I don't see fairies. I, I'm not. A, I'm not actually an alien person. I was a photographer that stumbled across all of this and then pushed it under my own creativity. The there is something about from 2022 today of giving one person so much data, and then and then and then and then when I question it every day, I question it every day. I realize, well, I'm just a photographer. Look how I'm corresponding with people over Twitter, and look how we sort of can change some sort of rhetoric in a way and try and get to the truth. And then I I feel like it was a data dump purposefully, a very purposeful, I've only processed 30%. What you've seen on my Twitter is only about 30% of everything that I've been able to capture. They gave me so, so, so much. It's um, it's bizarre. I'm sure people have looked at my feed and go like, this is crazy. This guy just keeps on churning it out. The reality yeah. is I can still do it every single day, probably for another two years. I can keep on churning it out. So there has to be a purpose around that. Um, I was quite normal before it, but I understand the I understand the the relevance of it, um, and I also understand the timing. Timing is also hellishly important. Not 2019, 2020 congressional hearings, and and the world itself started to ask more questions, but but somehow somehow we got all that data, which is which is also very confusing. So I um, I came across your account purely by chance, and it was your sort of I don't know your tagline I don't know what you call it on Twitter. Um, it said nature photographer, and I'm caught up in something amazing. So we and we broached that subject in in the first episode. Um, but some of the stuff you the objects that you seem to be capturing now seem to be different to what. Like the almost like the string-like elementals that that we talked about before, and those string-like ones have been captured on NASA feeds as well, because I know you've 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 put that data up as well. But there's definitely some different types of things you're capturing. Do you think that they are evolving, or do you think that they are actually different elementals? Um. You know, let's go back to that to that last one, the one that comes from my camp. And then I remembered him shooting something at me. And then I remembered getting him getting close with me in the magic forest. When I look at it, it's the same element. I can match that little white dot next to him when he changes and he changes. But generally, if you go back to the first, second, and third, the third time he's got really close and he, and he flew a lot slower. Mm-hmm. So then... You know, you go, okay, well, you, you've you've now seen for the last year and a half, he's come to me three, four times. He's recognized the drone. He knows what's going on. And also the, the drone, the drone is dead square. It's a Mavic. It's a Mavic Air 2. It's dead square. How do they know that the camera's in the front? Why do every single object come straight to the camera, not to the left, the right, or the back? They know it's a camera. Interesting, yeah. Um, there'd, there'd be a lot of times where I'd post a video about something like um, th- this bug bird drone thing in the face, and then I'd say to myself, "Man, I just wish I had cleaner a cleaner shot of this bloody bloody object so I can prove it." Yeah, the next day there's a fire, and the first object that comes to me is that element, but he goes a lot slower. So he, then he's allowed me to get a, a cleaner shot of him. I, I I obviously always don't want to take things too far on the procrastination side but there's there's a lot of there's a lot of nuances that 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 i see and some patterns that i see you mentioned on twitter i think about a week ago i saw of it where it's sort of it's only on twitter where you talk about this um and you, you say that you you end that tweet with maybe one day i'll be absolved you, you mentioned congressional hearings and sort of the advancements in sort of UAP UFO study in America. 
do you think that one day you will be absolved and you could be able to talk about this more openly? Um, from on a, on a personal standpoint of view, I, I, my camp has been suffering with tourism since COVID. But as, as this year has been my hardest year, but my most uh, UAP year, I have two business partners that own half of my company that are not there to assist me because they just stepped away because they don't know how to handle it. So my business is suffering because I no longer have those partners to support me. So that's that's really where I was was at on a personal level. On another level, I, I don't want to be a Twitter famous guy. I don't want to sit and talk about UAPs. I'm never going to go to a UAP conference. I'm not I'm not that type of guy. I, I'm exactly who I said I was. It's hellishly interesting, but I want to I want to prove myself to offload it to somebody who cares. And can use the work and the data, but to keep it shared. I think the important thing what's happening that I see now is that it's shared and everyone can have a say. Um, even with Patrick's work, you know, where whereas the Galileo project and all these other projects, like the stuff that Diana works on, and they, they keep all of it away from us. I'm not just sure if it's because they don't have it or they just feel like they want to keep it. But we, I think we can move a lot faster with everyone on Twitter and everything is open source. We talked off air about Twitter being a bit, everything's out in the open on Twitter. So you, I've seen your comments on other threads, which have allowed me to sort of see other people's point of views on a lot of, lot of things, whether that be good or bad. It is a wild west sometimes on twitter it really is and you can go down some deep deep um rabbit holes have you had people challenging what you're putting out because you put out a lot of stuff let's be honest there's a lot of information and data videos where you're slowing stuff down that's all out there and you just put it out do you have your naysayers that are trying to nobble you or put you off on put you off doing it um i have tons at the moment my instagram has been hijacked and somebody's going through all my instagram pictures and saying gay this guy's gay this is a gay bird this is a gay insect just silly silly ridiculous absolutely ridiculous silly stuff and i don't know how people find the time to just do silly stuff. And then I block, I block him, opens a new account. Block him, open it, and it's every day I have to uh, block, and every day it comes back on a new account. Um, with regards to, you know, I really, at this point, I need a publicist because I'm, I'm actually quite tired of doing of doing this. But when it comes to, to birding, it's very, very hard for me to listen to, to somebody say, that's a bird. I'm a person that would say, okay, well, what kind of bird? But people are not like that. They're just going to say it's an insect or it's a bird, which is highly frustrating because as a bird photographer in Africa for over 30 years, it would be like asking Neil deGrasse Tyson about stars in, 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 my, in my Africanism. So I don't want people to, to just say it's a plastic packet. But they haven't looked at the geolocation to say, well, where the hell did that plastic packet come from? The next town is 100 kilometers away. I'm in the middle of the bush. Um, and you can't, yeah, I, I get frustrated. I need a publicist on, on small things like this. Or I should just ignore it. But either way, I try and use everyone as an example. I give them a good say. I hope other people can read it and not ask me that same silly question again. The, the drone hasn't got a camera, has it? uh, it's got a camera, it hasn't got a microphone, so that we, you don't get any audio. You wouldn't, do you get a, do because you get of the sense, noise. Oh, sorry. Yeah, do you get a sense that there would be any sound coming from these guys, no? Or any kind of communication? Because if they're coming to you and multiple times coming to the drone, are they trying to communicate? I would say, ooh, this is going to sound, and this is where a lot of people get lost because they haven't followed the journey, but I'm going to say 100% they have tried to communicate with this drone. 
not audio. You um, you're never going to hear it because of the the sound of the drone propellers and the wash and everything. Yeah. yeah. But I have had elements that seem to make shapes of writing, um, and elements that change their shapes where you could almost read into the shape. So if they showed you twenty shapes, you there could be something hidden there. But I, I do believe, I, I do believe almost one hundred percent that they have tried to show some signals through, through making shapes. I was going to ask because a couple of times on your feed, you've got pictures and it's where they appear to in the letter in the shape of a letter P, 100%. and you sort of throw the question out there: what, what you guys think about this? So, what regarding the letter P in in this context, what what do you think they are trying to say with that? Um. I'm going to go with logic through, throughout everything. I didn't come here as an alien person, as I came as a photographer. But during the course of filming all of this stuff, I also had personal, very personal tragedy with my mom dying. So, the, so, so when we when we're trying to think about UAP as this invisible world, the visitors to my camp, um, all of this happening uh, just at that serious, serious time in my life. It's complicated to not think religion or visitors, you know. It's um, it's it's very complicated right now. I I almost am unopinionated. I I want to start from fresh in a way. That's fair. So has anybody reached out to you with theories that you've gone actually that's that could be because I know you've interacted with people. Um, me not stalking you, as I mentioned before the podcast started. I've not been stalking you on t- Twitter, but because I don't follow that many people, the people that I do follow, it I see more of their their stuff, and it sends me down rabbit holes. So I wonder if the people that you've been talking to have provided you with a theory of a what the elementals are, b like what their purpose is and see where they come from if they're not from earth or the water because i know a lot of stuff is coming from water um the tic tac was seen in the water the tic tac ufo so yeah sorry that was quite a long question but no i think um not uh, not i think i know that there are a few of us that are, are starting to put dots together and i'm being helped by quite a quite a lot of uh, my followers on twitter you know, we're concentrating on, on, let's just say, this black plasma that's always hidden or shrouded in a white plasma. And uh, please forgive me, I, I've forgotten most, most of my followers' names that converse with me on the spur. But, you know, he would, he would just come in and say, it's the, it's the white plasma that is creating a propulsion for the black, the black matter. And then, and then when I look at it and I count frames, like one, two, three, and, and you're watching his motion as he's twisting, but as he's twisting, he is physically shrouding himself in the white plasma. So I see forward, I see forward motions with that because that does start to make sense um, of, of what they're using to propel themselves, like sort of creating their own magic carpet in, in, in a fashion. How it's, how it's been able to do it like that, who knows. But it is highly plausible that... Um, you can almost see them manufacturing their own magic carpet to fly on. So forward motions like that with some some Twitter friends, yes. I have uh, made some some Muslim friends, and they they reminded me of really good jinn stories. And uh, I don't ever really dig into the Quran, and I must admit, the last two weeks I've been reading a lot, and uh, it is highly interesting. I, I I never knew the Quran actually spoke so much about the paranormal um, way more than than what the bible did so yeah it's interesting I, i'm happy to follow as many leads as as possible at this point have you had other people reach out that have caught similar footage at all i'm going to be honest um only one or two i, I see accidental stuff you know um uh, one hit wonders is a terrible term but but a lot of people capture the uh, it once as by accident um i and i scour the internet i i am a big internet fundy i have not seen anyone with with the amount of 
of continuation as they're giving us now. So I say no, I don't think anyone is, is close to it yet. Now, when we talked before, there was video footage that you captured um, whereby an object seemed to be releasing other objects um, as it was moving across, uh, which was very strange footage. Um, have you had more of those? kind of objects or there, there seems to be more shaped ones like there they seem to be forming better shapes now um i don't know if, if that's that's just what i've picked picked up on it um but they they seem to have shaped changed shapes but i don't know if you've had any more of these ones with the releasing different objects no no not yet um the other, uh, we also now finished with our fire season. So our real fire season will start again next year, February. Most of the good stuff is with all the best fires in the forests, you know. It has quietened yeah. down a little bit this last week or two, but um, yeah. And I and I'm also taking a little bit a little bit e a little bit easy the, this rest of this year with flying this drone. My drone is tired. I bet it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet you are as well. Cause I'm bugging. <laughs> yeah, I'm bugging. <laughs> and Ash, me and Ash have seen the, the volume people, of stuff you've been putting out. So. People don't realize it. Uh, it's, it's heavy, intensive stuff. You, you, okay, let's just say that there is there is a fire, but I fly it to it three times. The battery only lasts 15 minutes. I have to recharge three times. It takes an hour and a half to charge each battery. Plus the remote charge, the cell phone charge. Then when it's finished, I have to offload the 20 gigs, sift through frame by frame. Oh, it's a nightmare. Very time consuming. Rather you than me, I think. Um, <laughs> I, a lot of the shapes remind me, and people listening to this are probably going to shower their phones or whatever. But some of the objects look like what are supposedly the Black Knight satellite. Yes. So regardless, regardless, don't put that face at me, Ash. <laughs> but but some people will have seen the Black Knight satellite, as it's called, whether or not it's what it is. But the elementals seem to be similar type shapes. That's all I'm saying, Ash. <laughs> and I, I just wondered if you get a sense of proper size of these because obviously some of these you're filming at a, a bit of a distance and i just wonder how big you think some of these are they are not the size of the black knight that's that is one thing they are the size of anything in our nature i would presume because they shape shift um you they can range from a fly to a very large, very large bird. But I think their size range, their specific size range stays within something that can integrate in our nature. That is the size. I'm watching a video of yours. So as we're talking, I'm going through your feed as well, just so I can get some, some content to talk about as well as getting your experiences and there's one from the october the 5th that i'm watching um it's about 30 odd seconds long um the 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 wording you've got on there so pay attention he will show the black once again before he covers himself up and hides what looks to be the importance and not for close camera proximity now that object for me along with other ones that i've seen that object keeps its form and looks it does does sort of shift shape but I, I don't even know what to make of it if that makes sense it it's a it's a hundred percent it's um, like a lot of your stuff i just i'm like i am now i i watch it and i'm going i don't know i don't know what it is it looks solid. It looks quite large. This particular one looks quite large, 
and it's changing shape and I can't figure out what it is. It's got to very, very, it's, it's, and it was the same when I first come across you online. I was just fascinated. I could watch, I'm watching it over and over and I still can't get my head around what it is. It doesn't look like a typical UFO in inverted commas. It doesn't look like a Tic Tac that it seems to be quite a common shape that people are seeing or has been highlighted a lot. It doesn't look like metal, like a sphere, which I know has been seen around UFOs. And I've seen, seen that on Twitter a lot recently. It just looks like a unique thing. And I can't even figure out if it's a vegetable animal or a mineral. Do you see? Do you see the way that they fly towards the camera? Mm, yeah. You know, when you yeah. put us when you put a small drone up in the air, the chances for everything to always come to that drone is is, mm. is is a very very slim chance. But they do that purposefully for him just to do that in his little motion. He could have stayed in his tree. They could have stayed dead put. There was no there was no reason for any of these guys to do this. I don't even know really what to say. It's just the footage. There's so much of it that if and I I, and I'll back it up here because anyone that listens to the podcast, especially the round table, mm. I'm probably a lot more on the skeptical side. Yeah. Um, I would say, I think that's a balloon. I think that's going to be a bird or whatever. And the first you time shoot me, you shoot me down in flames, quite a lot. <laughs> I do. offline and then... as well. <laughs> and when I, when you first put me onto Daryl's stuff, mm. and I first started looking into it, and I was like, "It's it, okay, it's bushfires." Yeah, there's a camera. It looks like it could be ash, and that was yep. my first sort of like embers and ash. And that was my first yep. thought was it's going to be a thing. But then the more I've looked into it, watched the videos, talked to talked to you, Daryl, I it's not ash. I I can say as the skeptic, I can say that isn't ash, that isn't bits of ember, that is something. I, I like Greg, I don't know. You looking at it, you just think, I have no idea. It's just weird. It's just it is really, really compelling stuff. It is fascinating. It's just yeah, it's not ash. I don't know what it is. That's that's how I look at it. Because we, we do these monthly round tables, Daryl, and we'll we'll look at a piece of footage together or beforehand so we can discuss it and ash is always the the guy that grounds me when i get a bit excited and i'll go because i'm not the ufo guy i am more the paranormal side so i'm like oh this this bit of footage or i'll send something to ash go this bit of footage is this is cool and ash will go it's a weather balloon or it's just a balloon get over it (laughs) or but yeah, like I said, it's for him to say, I don't know what this is, and it's it's weird. I've, I've just had a comment, a comment now, somebody saying that it's a sheet. You know, it's I, I don't know how to actually explain to somebody how hard it is to, to, to get a sheet to, to lift itself and fly. It's, it's quite it's quite a thing. Eh? Some people just, the perception of things is, is, is really awkward. I think, um, yeah, everybody has their own opinion of what things can be. But but when you look at your stuff and the different shapes that you're capturing, like there's one that you posted 21 hours ago. Um, I don't know if you can call that one up, Ash. And there's, and that, that would have been done yesterday. We're recording this on the 9th, so that would have been the 8th of October for anybody. Uh, by the time we put this out. And there's like a, a string of, it's not a string, but like a, a motion. I, I don't even know what to, like multiple black objects with. Does it look like he's got a spine? Yes. A spine is a great way of describing what I'm looking at. Can you see that, Ash? Mine's not in order for some reason. It's just like random. 
<laughs> so I'm on Daryl's profile, and it's from 21 hours ago, it says. Um, let me, just so we can, you can see what we're talking about. Let me. Oh, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. Yeah, yeah, do, it? Need, like multiple, like, se segments to it, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And your comment is, your guess is as good as mine. And that is, essentially, when I'm looking at the vast range of different objects that you're capturing, the shapes of them, when people capture... So, for example, I've been watching Skinwalker Ranch, and there's all this, always like this one type of object that appears, a light in the sky, a dot, and it hovers there. Fascinating piece of footage. But it's always a similar type shape. A lot of them are also orb shapes. And I know we've talked about your experience with red orbs. Um, Skinwalker Ranch, a phenomenal amount of orbs there. But the stuff you're capturing, people need to see it to 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 sort of get why we why we've spoken to you twice now about this. <laughs> Um, because each video seems to be different shapes. Everything's, I know there's sort of repeating ones, but it's it not almost, shape. There's sometimes I really feel like, ah, oh, their planet is in peril. They've come here and, and this is where they've decided to, to open a porthole and everything is allowed to come out. Their mm -hmm. birds, their insects, their little critters. And then they spend the day and they, they all get back in and then they they go. It is so bizarre. I, I can't make a best of collection. There's just too many different elements for, for, for my computer to handle it. And I think elements and elementals is a great name for them because I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't it's difficult to describe all the different types of stuff you can see on your videos okay. it's something that people have to watch yeah so for for everybody listening it's at daryl john kemp and it's daryl with a double r so it's d-a-double-r-y-l-j-o-n-k-e-m-p on twitter we'll put the links in like we did before but you just have to check them out i i don't know I think... what to say it. all the time i'm just looking at it I, I follow it on a daily basis on my feed and i'm just like what the fuck am i looking at i just i can't even you can't explain like i'm looking at this one you're talking about the from the tray one hours ago and i'm looking at it now large on my screen i'm just like i, I there's no words i can't even i can't describe it i can't if someone says what you're looking at I couldn't describe what I'm looking at. It's just weird. It's, yeah, weird is the word, the word, I think. Yeah, weird. Weird. But it's definitely something. And yeah. that's the, the that's a crazy thing. Um, and I just... There's not many times when we have a podcast where we're sort of stuck for words, genuinely stuck for words, purely for the fact that Ash is the... Like, the um the skeptic when we're looking at stuff for definite for definite i i am skeptical about a lot of stuff but i i get quite excited when i see a bit of footage and go oh that's that's cool so when when we get stuff like this it, it it's not often we're stuck for words genuinely daryl it's we can talk for hours and we do talk for hours me and ash off and online um, and we talk about all the paranormal stuff, all the UFO stuff. We're on multiple podcasts talking about stuff, and we're always talking. But your footage seems to draws my attention every time. <laughs> yeah, it's mesmerising stuff. It really is, and people do need to check it out because it's not just stuff we we're, we're not just hyping it up for the podcast. It's genuinely. It's not like it's not like there's a book to sell or a movie coming out. It's just you're just posting this stuff just for people to watch, and yeah, the people have to go and watch it. And just even if it's just to get more eyes and more opinions on what it could I, be. I, yeah, exactly, exactly. If you go to the one on October the second, check out that object there. It's almost like a flying octopus, squid type thing. 
and that thus is over. There will be silences in this podcast. I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, yeah, yeah, I see the one. I like yeah. the silence. I like people really looking, so I like it. It's 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 a, and normally on the podcast we would cut out all the silences, but I think they're valid at this point because they they're capturing what we're we're discussing in real time and looking at your feed in real time, both of us. And it's just trying to take it in. Yeah. Like what we're actually looking at. Yeah, there's stuff that you go, actually, I've seen stuff on other programs or videos on the internet that look like that. But then you go to the next one and go, no, it's it's not like anything captured before. It's weird. It's very strange. In a good way, strange. In a good way. Um, They're non non obtrusive. So... hmm. You know, they hang out in forests and trees and things like that. It's, it's not, it's not a dangerous environment as far as I'm seeing it. I'm seeing very placid, nature orientated elementals. Um, yeah, you know, it's what I, that's what I'm feeling from it. So, so you don't feel in any way that they're like a malevolent, malevolent um, kind of. The, entity. I'll, the, I'll use the word entity. I'm, I'm going to be biased. That, that's that's where I, I don't want to make too much uh, opinions. Mm. But you know, my, my biasness is is based on logic and the way that the world is turning. And all of a sudden, here they are. They just popped up, and and all of a sudden, a simple guy living in Mozambique with a camp can film them. So I, I look at the two in, in a great timing scheme. Um, but I will be biased because um, I know this world is in so much trouble. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, for, yeah, for you to capture this stuff, and like you say, just uh, say an ordinary guy, nice guy, um, capturing this stuff. There's actually a photo, and I ca- I caught it the other day that you'd put up where you noticed that there was a couple of American bird watchers <laughs> at the same place where you captured the photo of that sort of silver plasma object <laughs> did, you, did you speak to them oh, they, they were lurking outside and it was eight o'clock in the morning and i was taking my dog for a walk but uh, yeah. I, I carry my own camera that time so just in case i see like a nice uh, um, broad bull roller or something like that so as i left my campground Two Americans just standing in the front looking so lost. So they had all their birding equipment with them. And I was, okay, well, why don't you uh, take a walk along the lake? There's there's some good birds with the vegetables. And, and they just looked really bemused. They asked me what I was doing with my camera. And I told them I was just, uh, just in case I saw a really good bird. I, I, I keep my camera just in case. And then they, yeah. they came in and plonked their camera down. And then walked to the right hand side and just started talking to each other. And then uh, I went I went to my house, but I looked through the window and they just acted weird. So I decided to walk past and take that picture that I posted. Yeah, um, I, yeah it was really odd, you know, because three years of COVID, let alone American bird watchers, I haven't had any bird watchers, you know, it's been dead here. Long way to come. Yeah, definitely a long way to come. It's interesting. You, there's an interesting on the back of the the guy's shoulder, his left shoulder. There's a quite a bright object in the tree or bush behind him. It might be just a reflection on him, but the I don't know which way the the sun looks like. It's oh, I'm gonna you're gonna have to look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're doing some li- live investigation of photo on the podcast, everybody. <laughs> the, it looks like a reflection. Something is yeah, cold, maybe. Yeah, it does maybe. look like a reflection of something, but I can't figure out. Yeah, I have a, a weird extension on my Google Chrome called Absolute yeah. Absolute Analytics. It's an, an extension being, being given to me by Google itself that I cannot get rid of. 
completely has taken over my computer. The only way I can I can't get rid of it because it's not on the computer, it's through the Google. So I don't know what to do with that. But uh, but absolute analytics. What the hell? Okay. <laughs> it sounds dodgy, doesn't it? Hmm. I just yeah, I just I don't know what to say about the footage. It's just fascinating. <laughs> you still on it there. <laughs> yeah, I got the feed up and when we're doing the podcasts, I know Ash does as well. I'll, I'll pull up who we're talking about. I'll pull up maybe their website or a book that they're writing. I'll, I'll look it up online and just see if we can get a bit more information because it helps us with like questions. And um, if somebody talks about something that we don't really know about, we can sort of have a Google of it, um, pull up some information, and we'll we'll send it to each other as we're doing the podcast to sort of say this is what he's talking about or this is what she's talking about. Um, so. Yeah, so I've got your feed, just scrolling through your feed and the different shapes we're seeing on video footage. And I know people have said to you it's birds and stuff like that. But like you say, you've been photographing birds for 30 years. You should know what a bird looks like on a photograph or on a bit of video, especially if it's a bird specific to Mozambique and your, your local area, you would expect to have some kind of expert knowledge compared to that person. There's a photograph from the 21st of September, which is fascinating me as well, is a load of migrating geese or birds, and there's an object. With the cloud guys. It says here, but each time I want to show the orbs interacting with our birds, there is a problem. Here is the pic of the video they didn't like. Who's they? The elementals? Uh, well, I would say the algorithm. I, I wouldn't say there's somebody sitting behind a computer rejecting me, but from from the time you did that podcast, I think Twitter banned me twice or three times or four times. <laughs> Sorry. I'm I'm on number nine. You're on number nine. And uh, wow. it's it's really it's really frustrating because I want to show people these two other elements. But I'm scared. Yeah. You know what happens? I get locked out for good. So each time I actually post something, I hold my breath. I'm like, oh, is it going to go through? So I've got some really amazing elements to post, but I'm just a bit scared. I don't know why the algorithm does not enjoy it. Strange. It's like conspiracy right there. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, we keep pushing. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. and I mean, I know you are trying to get answers. I, I see the, um, the the feeds and the conversations online. Um, it's yeah, I it's a fascinating journey that I'm going on with you as I, I flick through Twitter and I see your stuff and I see the new stuff and I see your conversations with people and them interacting with you. So I feel like I'm kind of on that journey with you to a certain extent because the way twitter works and you can see everything and you can dip into different conversations and see the different theories that you're sort of going down those paths it, it it's absolutely fascinating it really is um yeah i'd say keep it up just i know you mentioned a couple of times on your twitter about sort of not wanting to carry on doing it. Uh, so what, what's, where are you sort of standing on that at the minute? Uh, I, I would love to carry on, but I really, after this time, I'd like to get a team, you know, like they, they have, there's so much to do to learn so much more. Um, uh, to put it this way, everything that you've seen on my Twitter, that's from me not really leaving home. We really wanted to get stuck into it. Well, we'll drive to the deeper forests. And we're going to see better stuff. But I can't do it all by myself again for the fourth year. It's it's, it's quite taxing on my business, quite taxing on my health. But I, I, I do want to carry on. But I'm hoping 
to reach the right people and then they can carry on. I can offer my camp as a great research base. It's the best base you could possibly have because you don't have to leave it. You can do everything from the camp. Um, I'm looking for the great offload, but I don't want, I don't want like the Galileo project or a project takeover. And then all of a sudden everyone from Twitter gets cut off from, from the learning that we're only just getting into now. I 100% believe in my heart and soul that the key for all of us to, to understand what's going on is going to be probably through this process. And the reason why I say it is because we can actually film them every day here. And I've proven it. I can do it every day. It is a great place to come and research these elementals. Probably the best in the world at the moment. Now, do you think based on, so, so more like my final question really for me, um, do you think that other areas of the world that have similar type environment to you yes so i'm thinking like south america maybe 100 percent sort of sort of southern equator in uh, environment do you think that they will are experiencing similar elementals 150 percent um, yeah, 150%. They, they, they capture some really, really weird stuff, and it is also quite continuous. Um, yeah, um, there is something about deep jungle forests. Yeah, they, 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 they love trees. They, they really do. Trees is, trees is something actually quite, quite high on their agenda. Okay. Cool. Well... Dal, thanks again for taking the time to chat to us, sharing your experiences, going through some of these pictures and videos, which I mean, I won't bleat on about, but they are great. And I just urge everyone just to check out your Twitter, have a look for yourself, let us know what you think, let Dal know what you think. Um, yeah, just remind us again where we can find your stuff, Dal. Uh, on Twitter, I think, at Daryl John Kim. Awesome. Yeah, well, well, thank you very much again, Daryl. I know um, we tr we tried to do this last week and we had a few internet issues, so I'm glad we've been able to have a conversation with you again. And like you say, we've I think we've got more or less answers um, in this episode than we did last last time. Um, so I do appreciate you taking the time to to put your experiences out and your account of things through our podcast and hopefully we can try and get people to to assist you or or, or whatever to, to try and get some answers for you so thank you very much it's a pleasure guys nice chatting Pursuit of the Paranormal with Ash and Greg.